Hey guys, welcome to part two of my video about the book Ponzinomics. I hope everyone watched and enjoyed part one. If you missed it, I'll put the link here or here somewhere for you to watch. Without any further hesitation, I would like to introduce my guest today, the author of the book himself, Robert L. Fitzpatrick. Yes, thank you. Very nice to be here with you. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much for joining me today, Robert. How are you? I'm very good. Thank you. I'm in North Carolina. That's where I live. So long ways away, but I think the topic we're speaking about covers <laughs> universal. That is true. So let's get right into it. Reading your book, one can tell that a lot of research went into writing it. You're really giving us the full picture here. What was your inspiration to write such a detailed book about MLM? Well, first of all, uh, there are no other books. <laughs> there was one that was one of the first inspirations. Here is a phenomenon affecting hundreds of millions of people over a long period of time uh, in over 170 countries, uh, hundreds of billions of dollars involved being lost. Um, so a book uh, I felt was needed, uh, has been needed for a long time that addressed this topic directly, that dissected it, deconstructed it. As to why I wrote it, um, it was an outgrowth of years of work. And my first encounter with pyramid schemes occurred many years ago, fascinated me got me interested in trying to understand how they work, what are they, and it sort of carried itself forward. Um, I did write another book, an earlier book, a more general book on the subject. And from that book, I was um, contacted by attorneys to serve as an expert witness. Many journalists contacted me. So I could see that I had information that was valuable and important to many people and uh, but it had never been brought together into one document that explained where this whole phenomenon began what how does it work um what's why do people lose their money and why is it allowed by governments and so that's that was the 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 impetus for putting it all together into a book all right and for our viewers your first book is called false prophets right Yes, False yeah. Prophets uh, is uh, a more generic book that really delved into uh, the values and, and some of the uh, historical values, in, uh, particularly in the United States, that sort of generated this uh, mindset here, um, magical thinking that supports the pyramid scheme. Well, we can speak about that uh, a little more maybe when we talk about the American dream. Yes, exactly. We have more questions um, covering this topic. Um, in the book, you talk about MLM recruiters calling people like us, journalists and researchers, losers. Do you consider them to be winners? <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, it's not a win-lose situation. It's um, multi-level marketing is designed in deceptively uh, to gain people's money um, on false pretenses, uh, withholding certain information, asserting false information, and managing to, in many cases, successfully get people to give their money. That's not a win. Um, <clears throat> I think of it more as predator, predatory. It's predatory. And it's not business. Business involves voluntary uh, transactions between people uh, with a sufficient knowledge to enter into these transactions mm -hmm. voluntarily, and then resulting in uh, a, a reasonable exchange of value. That's a business. That's what all business is. Exactly. If I trick you, if I deceive you and I get your money and you don't get what I had told you you would get, that's not a business transaction. So winners and losers, there are winners and losers in competitive situations. There are winners and losers in business 
but this is not business and this is not competitive. So I think the terms are really used only to demean people and discourage them and discredit them mm -hmm. uh, rather than it, it has no bearing on reality though. All right, <laughs> so no winners or losers in MLM. We both know that any MLM company is either a, a pyramid or a Ponzi scheme. Could you elaborate on that? Yes. So um, in general, and this is another reason I wanted to, to write the book, over and over and over, I hear the question presented, what's the difference between multi-level marketing and a pyramid scheme, right? Um, also phrased as, can you please tell me the difference between a legitimate multi-level marketing company and an illegitimate uh, pyramid scheme that calls itself multi-level marketing? What's the difference? So um, I and other colleagues of mine uh, were asked this question so often, and we finally decided to do a, the simplest thing, to break down what and deconstruct what multi-level marketing actually is. So, and rather than asking when people say, please compare or tell me the difference, let's start with defining multi-level marketing by itself. We came up with four elements to it. That is universal, every multi-level marketing has them and they are defining traits. They are not superficial, they are defining traits. The first one is the most important one. They are based on an endless chain. No other business is based on this. So I recruit you and I tell you, you can make money if you recruit five other people. Mm -hmm. You ask me, how am I, how do I recruit five other people? You tell those five, they can recruit each five more and so on forever. It ignores limits of markets. It ignores product demand. It ignores the number of people <laughs> available and so on. All MLMs are based on that. Second, you have to always pay. It's not just an opportunity. You have to pay to get in on this chain. Um, so people often ask, uh, they're presented as this is like a job. You get a job. But then they, you, when you arrive for the job, they tell you you have to pay. Yeah. So why am I paying for my job? You know? Yeah, that's true. The third thing is you have to recruit. If you're going to make money in multi-level marketing, even though it's called direct selling, yeah. you have to recruit other people or other salespeople, so-called salespeople. So there's a recruiting mandate. So there's an endless chain. There's a pay to play. You have to pay. To make money, you have to recruit. And the fourth element is that the pay formula, the method of how it works, how, how do I get paid on this? How does it work? If you look at that formula for the financial formula for how money moves around, it's a, an extreme transfer. The people who come in at the end, the majority of their money goes right to the top of the chain. Doesn't go to the person that just first recruits them or even the next. It goes straight up to the top. A little bit goes in between, but mm -hmm. most of it goes. So if you put those four together, an endless chain, you have to pay, you have to recruit, and there's an extreme money transfer from the last ones into them, you see that's precise definition of a pyramid scheme. So multi-level exactly. marketing is, is defined, operates as a pyramid scheme. It uses buy-sell transactions as its method. Uh, others use club membership or financial investment or whatever. But in multi-level marketing, the transactions are disguised as buy, sell, or sales transactions. But really, it is all based on recruiting and transferring this money from the last ones into the top. All right. So now you defined it already a little bit. Um, I will read your definition at the beginning of the book you define ponzinomics as i quote a pseudo-economic all-encompassing delusional belief system that promotes the swindle of a ponzi or pyramid scheme as a valid economic model that promises believers a fulfilling and financially rewarding way of life complete with mission values leadership and worldview 
the societal spread of Ponzinomics is necessarily accompanied by governmental collusion. How would you describe a belief system? Yes, this is so, so important for people who uh, get caught up in multi-level marketing uh, to, to know, understand this, that multi-level marketing is not just a financial scam. You know, it's not just uh, I, bought, I sell you a product and it's overpriced or it doesn't work or, you know, I don't back it up with a warranty or something like that. That's a financial scam. Multi-level marketing is being conducted on a vast scale. So it's a fraud committed on an industrial scale. It isn't just me tricking you. It's, it's the perpetrators of the scheme uh, attempting to defraud and deceive thousands and thousands of people all at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then to keep it going year after year after year, even as most of these people 90% are going to be losing, losing, quitting, and new groups come in. How do you make such a system work? Well, you do this by presenting it as far more than just money and far more than just a business. It is a way of life and it involves a belief system. And they frequently tell you in order for this to work, that it's a different kind of economic system. It works if you believe in it. If you doubt it, it won't work. So when you say, well, what about all those other people that lost their money and quit? Well, they didn't believe. Yeah. So now what is it they're asking you to believe? One of the things they're asking you to believe, part of the belief system, is that everything is possible if you believe. Anything can happen. Reality is only what you believe it to be. There is no objective reality. So when I present rational data on losses, when I present the mathematics of a pyramid scheme showing that the majority are at the bottom and will always be at the bottom and therefore have to lose, when I speak about the numbers that you can't expand forever, they just say, well, that's just your way of thinking. Mm -hmm. If you believe it, if you have confidence, if you have vision, you can make this work for you. So it is presented then first as a, an economic model based on the pyramid scheme. If I could just recruit five and they recruit 25, look how much money I could be. So that's the first one, something that theoretically, at least it seems, could mm -hmm. offer me unlimited money, far more than you'd ever make in your salary far more than your job would ever give you. So this is opportunity of a lifetime based on the pyramid scheme or the endless chain expansion. How could such a thing work? It's based on the idea that you can shape reality through power of belief, right? So now you have people who claim that they have this magical power. Mm -hmm. So they get on the stage and they present themselves like God-like figures, prophets, gurus yeah and they give you a vision of how life should work and among the other things they're telling you is what you should consider valuable and not valuable and who you should associate with and not associate in order to maintain your belief and achieve this mm -hmm. success i have seen cases where people in the midst of this where they become so dominated and still failing because of course they are going to fail financially believing that this is going to bring them complete happiness, but it's only brought them misery. They've lost all their friends because they got rid of any friend that doubted it. Exactly. Have killed themselves, committed suicide. So it is very dark. And, and it is, it is a, an ideology of mind control and, and deception and financial, financially uh, defrauding people. So yeah, I think, I think dark is the correct word for this. So, in your chapter, Playing a Math Trick, you show us a, how a pyramid scheme works in hard numbers. Why is it that so many people still don't seem to see it? A few ideas come to mind. Persuasion of the recruiters, lack of education, desperate need of money. But I'm sure the viewers would be most interested in your view. 
Uh, and and I, it, is a, it is a combination of factors. I think uh, you, you named some of the, the, the top ones. I, I would start first with the way multi-level marketing is spread. It is spread among people who already know each other, trust each other, may love each other. So if someone solicits you, and remember, nobody joins multi-level marketing. They are always solicited. You know, I, I've never met people that when I woke up in the morning and said, I think I want to go join a multi-level marketing company. It never works like that. What happens is a friend, a relative, something they see online solicits them, invites them to join. Mm -hmm. Usually it is somebody you know, somebody you trust. So that sets you up right away. Your guard drops way down. Your rational thinking why would you be suspicious? Somebody you've known for years is inviting you to do this or someone who looks like you is part of your community. Mm -hmm. The second thing is it is disguised as something quite conventional and more or less benign, selling a product, often a health product, called a health product. They're not actual medicines, but vitamins, supplements, skin creams, and so on. Sounds good. Certainly not products that are, appear to be dangerous or harmful. So um, you're, you're, it's disguised as something uh, benign, something uh, positive. So you've learned of this from someone who you knew and trusted to, do, to engage in an activity that seems uh, not harmful and, and positive, and perhaps doing, doing some good. You're then given pictures of the potent, utopian potential results from this. Great money, vacations, nice cars, and so on. All of these things lower your... your now, you mentioned desperation, hope, and so on. And, and let's put it in real life context. Many people are struggling with debt uh, or students, and this doesn't always apply in Europe, but in the United States, students come out of school with a lot of debt. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and so on. Uh, but younger people in particular today, and often women are looking for opportunities to have ba basically be able to have a family plus have financial security. That's hard to find. Yeah, to work from home. Saying I can, we can offer all of that to you. So, you know, this is wrapped in very attractive, alluring disguises. Uh, the, the, the part that is the scam, the part that is the, the fraud, the, the part of it that is the financial transaction that's going to cause you to lose your money is based on the pyramid scheme. The pyramid scheme is a fraud uh, because of math. You know, it's based on a math trick, you might say, as we talked about. And it is true that this particular uh, element of math eludes many, many people. It, it's, a, it's a function of math, very simple, nothing complicated, really. But it is true that it is a phenomenon of, of numbers that many people don't have never studied and don't look at. And I use the example in the book of uh, the riddle, mm -hmm. um, I would offer you $1 million today, right now in cash in your hand, or I will give you one penny in your hand today. And we will double that penny every day for 30 days. So the first day you're gonna have a penny, second day you'll have two pennies, and the third day you'll have four pennies. We have 26 or 27 more days. Mm -hmm. Now, which do you choose, the million or the penny doubling? And, and, and it, it sort of blows your mind in a way to realize that that penny, double, 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 at a certain point will explode in numbers and become over $5 million on the 30th day. So it doesn't sort of compute. It's a little bit of a blind spot, I think, in our, yeah. in our rational minds. And the pyramid scheme is based on that. Oh, sure, you know five people. And hey, they will know five people, right? So 
right away you have five and then they each go out and get their five friends already 25 you have 30 people in your downline already and you're going to get money from all of them it sounds feasible but when it's done on a large scale and you're 20 rows down no you won't find five who get five it won't happen like that for you so I, I think it's a combination of the disguise, the motives that drive people into it, and that blind spot. Uh, I'll add one other element too. They introduce language to you that is what they call thought stopping. It's not really rational. Like the, you'll say, well, who, why do so many lose? Well, they quit. Well, why did they quit? Because they're losers. So, well, wait. They lost because they quit, but they quit because they're losers. Doesn't make any sense, but it stops you from thinking. So they dominate your time. They pour over you this thought process about believing can make anything happen. A lot of positive talk, testimonials of people who've succeeded. The leader is presented as someone who dominates you. If you question him, they say, you know, the leader is a multimillionaire. Are you a multimillionaire? Well, well, no. Well, wh wh then why would you think you know more than him? He's trying to help you. So yeah. the leader is exalted and presented there. These are all methods of mind control. So considering all this, how can consumers protect themselves from losing money to an MLM company? Does a legitimate way of earning money through such a company even exist? In my view, earning money in multi-level marketing is not legitimate, um, <clears throat> which is not to say it's illegal. Unfortunately, governments around the world have really not investigated uh, or developed even policies toward this. So, you can't, and as an individual, rely on the guidelines of government agencies. You cannot rely on law enforcement to sort of uh, set the boundaries for what's legal and not legal for you. You can normally in business, when something is illegal, you, well, if you get into it and you lose your money, you might even go to jail. Okay, at least you knew. Uh, if you want to engage in criminal activity, you, you can do that, but there are consequences. Multi-level marketing, you wouldn't really know. Of, of all the schemes that have been prosecuted all over the world, almost nobody ever goes to jail. Mm -hmm. Millions of people have given money into those schemes that were later declared illegal. What was the difference between those schemes and the, all the others? Nobody, the government does not explain this. So for me, I think the best advice to people and the best defense is to know as much as you can upfront about multi-level marketing, not a particular one, all of them, to understand what you're getting in. If people uh, saw a multi-level marketing, saw the characteristics and got the, the buzzwords, recognized very quickly, this is multi-level marketing, that's a pyramid scheme and a cult, mind control, they'd stay away, even if they didn't understand it exactly. Hey there, and thank you so much for your interest in my Poncinomics series. As you might have noticed, the interview has gotten quite long, since there were so many interesting topics to discuss. Click here to watch the second part of my conversation with Robert L. Fitzpatrick. I'll see you on the next one.